Hey guys, Kimmy Vapes here and I'm back again with another review and I am so excited to do this review today because I have in my possession the Drop RDA. That's right, the Drop RDA that was manufactured by DigiFlavor and a TVC creation by the Vapor Chronicles himself. So let's go ahead and why are we waiting? Let's go down. I'll show you the up and close of all the packaging and then we'll come back up and talk about it. Okay, and here it is, the Drop RDA. It'll come in a Digi Flavor box. Now, the packaging that I do have is a reviewer's packaging, so the packaging that you receive your drop in will be different from the one that I have. Let's go ahead and take out the drop. And the spare drip tip. And then underneath the foam here, Underneath the foam is your spare parts bag, which comes with a spare O-ring for the inner opening of your RDA, spare O-rings for the barrel, as well as the top cap, a tri-tool, spare grub screws, and a 510 to 810 adapter. It also comes with a spare drip tip, which is Altum. It is a slightly taller and skinnier drip tip. And here is the RDA, which comes with a frosted drip tip. And you can see here on the front, it is laser engraved drop right above the airflow. Now on this particular RDA, which is a reviewer's RDA, it's missing the drop on the other side. However, I have been told by Brian that the retail versions will have drop on both sides of the airflow. Okay, let's go ahead and pop off the top cap. And right away you can see that the top cap is unique. It has a stepped airflow system. And it is it goes on with a single O-ring. And you take your drip tip off. The opening is a standard 810 opening with a O-ring on the inner of the hole. And if you take and put the top cap in, you'll see the airflow wide open. And as you turn, those steps slowly close off the airflow. So there we have just the top four holes tur turned off. And then if you turn it, you'll start to close off that second row, the third row, and then finally the fourth row. And whatever you do on one side, it will do on the other. This is a dual airflow only RDA. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the build deck. So here's the barrel on with the build deck. And something I wanted to point out here as I take the barrel off is you'll see that there is a notch in the build deck and a cutout in the barrel. And what that does is when you're adjusting your airflow, it prevents your barrel from turning with the airflow so that your airflow is always lined up to go right between those posts, which is really great. I love that there's a notch. I think all two-piece RDAs like this should have a notched build deck. Okay, put the barrel to the side and we'll look at the build deck. So one of the interesting things about this RDA is really innovative is the drop-in style posts that allow you to cut your leads after you drop your coils in. So I wouldn't say this is a postless deck, but it does act in like a postless deck in that you drop your coils in through the top. And then if you have extra long leads or leads that are too long, then you can snip them after. So no pre-cutting needed. You can just drop your coils in, tighten them down, and then pre-cut. And I will show that when I get to the build portion. Couple things about this RDA is that it is 24 millimeters in diameter. It is a gold-plated positive and negative posts. And if we turn it over on the bottom here, you'll see it says drop, digi flavor, designed by the Vapor Chronicles. And then of course you have your serialized numbers and stuff there. The negative post is secured by a Phillips screw and your 510 pin there is a nice protruding 510. So this 510 is safe on hybrid mods. 
And one of the other things that I did want to mention that comes in your little goodie bag here is your squonk pin. Now I really like this squonk pin because it is a raised squonk pin, which I'll show you what that means here. I'm going to go ahead and install the squonk pin into this deck. And just to show you here, this is the updated squonk pin. The retail versions will come with a Phillips head squonk pin. So it will be fully enclosed all the way around on the squonk pin. I'm just going to go ahead and tighten the squonk pin in here. Okay, and now we have the squonk pin installed. So if you can see down here in the juice well, your squonk pin is actually raised a couple millimeters from the bottom of the deck. This is really great because when you're squonking and you have coils that are more raised here because your coils will be sitting close to the top of these posts, though you can lower them lower, I found that running a dual coil build especially, the coils usually sit just slightly above the post and pulled to the center. So when your wicks come down to the well, when you squonk, your juice is going to come up and instead of going right back down into the squonk bottle, you're going to be left with a little bit of juice in the well and that will make sure that your wicks are fully saturated and allow for a lot of juice to travel up the wicks and into your coils, keeping everything really nice and moist. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and take the squonk pin out and put my 510 pin back in and we'll go ahead and put a build on it. Okay, and one of the other nice things about the post screws here, you're going to receive two types of post screws. It'll come with installed flathead post screws and then you'll receive one additional set of Phillips head screws, I believe. And these screws do come in from the outside. So is that when you place your coils into the posts, if you have big wide coils, the coils won't get twisted. Your leads will lay flat and the screw will screw right into the flat side of the lead. So that's really nice. And the coils that I am installing today are braided three millimeter ID coils. And I like to just slightly space my coils. And as you can see, I can just drop it in there push it down a little bit to where I want it, turn it around to the other side, and do the same thing with the other side. I just place my leads in, drop the coil down into it, and then I can tighten my coils. For me, I don't even need a coil jig with this since the screws go in flat against the coil leads. I don't find that it twists my coils anymore or anything like that. So I don't even need to insert my coil jig in. I just hold my finger to keep the coil where I want it, tighten my leads, and then I can go ahead and snip my leads. So as you can see, my leads there are down in the deck. And all I have to do is go from underneath and snip. Super simple, super easy, no problems at all snipping. One thing you do want to make sure of is when you're cutting your leads, if they do fall down in the deck, make sure that you get all those snip leads out of the deck before you go to fire it. You don't want any shorts. So there, I've got one, two, three, four leads, so I know all my leads are out of the deck. Now I can take my coil jig and just straighten my coils however I want them. And I tend to like to bring my coils in towards the center of the deck and let them meet up there and slightly push down just a little bit there. So once I have my coils positioned where I want, I'll just make sure my leads are nice and tight. And once I'm satisfied that everything's nice and tight, I'll go ahead and start to pulse my coils just to make sure that there are no shorts.
I like to cut my wicks right at the bottom of the deck. So just measure it to be at the bottom there. And you want to make sure that your wicks are not blocking that airflow there. Now we're ready to juice it up. I'll be vaping this Hit That Cookie Pistachio. Okay, and that's the up and close of the drop RDA. Let's go ahead and go back up and I'll give you my thoughts about it. So there it was, you guys, the drop RDA up and close and build. Now the build that I put in there, as I mentioned earlier, is a braided build. It's a five strand stainless steel, stainless steel 316L build. It ohmed out to 0.17 and right now I'm vaping it at just 64 watts. I tend to like a cooler build. So let's talk a little bit more about the drop RDA. First, I must disclose, I know the Vapor Chronicles. Brian Herb, I've known him for quite some time. Um, I was actually present when he was developing this RDA. Uh, he shown me the numerous drawings he had for it, the numerous revisions. Um, he's a really great guy. He's been wor working really hard on this RDA, and I am so excited and so happy to be able to show it off to you guys because it is phenomenal. Um, everything in this RDA meets the way that I vape. Not to say that it will meet the way everybody vapes, but it would be pretty hard for anybody to say that this RDA is not a good RDA. And I'll tell you why. So here's a few of the things that I really love about this RDA. Beside the aesthetics, which I'll go ahead and get out of the way, I love the two-tone. I love that it has the black accents on the top and bottom and the silver barrel, as well as I do know it's also coming in with a black barrel with silver accents. I think it makes it look very modern. It stands out from other RDAs that are on the market, which are all one color, or you get one color plus the gold uh, base, which to me has always been kind of ugly to me to have an RDA that's all one color and then with a, a gold base, but that's personal preference. So that out of the way, the airflow. On this airflow, which is a combination of 10 holes, you have the stepped airflow configuration. And what that allows you to do is close off the holes, starting at the top and stepping down. So really what you can do with this airflow is you can go anywhere from wide open, which I'll go ahead and take a vape off it, wide open. My favorite preference for this RDA is to have the top six closed off and just have the bottom six open. Which gives you just a slightly restrictive lung hit. But that's not where you can stop with it. You can close off the next two to only have four hit, four holes open. Which gives you a really nice restricted lung hit. If you go even further, you can just have the bottom two open. Which in my opinion starts to get into the mouth to lung territory. I honestly think that you can mouth to lung on this RDA with just the bottom two or even the bottom one open with the right build in here. And let me tell you, you can put so many different kinds of build in here. I did a very basic build just for the tutorial, but really your imagination can run wild. You can do a single coil. I had the chance when I was in Alabama last weekend with Brian and everybody else, I was able to vape on his, which he had a single coil set up in a squonker. And let me tell you, it was amazing. The flavor that I could get off of it, of just the single coil. Even though this is dual flow air option only, it works really well with a single coil in my opinion. So going back to the airflow, one of the things with the airflow that Brian was explaining to me and also when I got it, I really kind of had that, wow, he, he knows what he's talking about. The way that he set up the posts and the notch in the deck so is that the airflow goes right between the posts and you have these 
four holes at the top and six holes at the bottom, it's almost like you're getting both bottom and top airflow because those bottom six holes shoot under your coil between those posts and then up right through the center. And then you've got your top airflow that shoots right at your coils, depending on where you position them. So you really do get the sensation that you're getting a bottom and top airflow when you vape off of it. You get all that wonderful flavor from bottom airflow, but you get that less restrictive vape from that top designed airflow. Wonderful airflow, quiet, super smooth. I love this airflow. I love that he put a notch on the deck. One of my biggest pet peeves when I, and I have quite a few RDAs. Some of them are, are you know, like the Goon, the Kennedy, uh, really solid RDAs of the past. But I've gotten a lot of newer RDAs lately. And one of the things that I don't like with side airflow RDAs is when the barrel is not notched with the deck. So what happens is when you have a barrel and a top cap that spins separately and there's no notch, when you're trying to adjust your airflow, especially if the O-rings are kind of tight, your whole barrel moves and you end up losing your airflow being centered on your coils. You end up with it hitting the posts or not directly centered where you need that airflow to go. It also causes turbulence and in some cases whistling. I'll tell you what, with every single airflow setting that I vaped on this, no whistling, no turbulence, just smooth, beautiful airflow. You can go from mouth to lung all the way to wide open direct lung. And I really love that. The next thing I wanna talk about here on the RDA is of course the build deck. A drop-in style build deck. I love the concept. I was really skeptical about being able to put your coils in from the top of the post and snip them and the RDA still have a fairly low profile. This RDA in height is only 26 millimeters. My Kennedy RDA is taller than that. And it's 24 millimeters in diameter, which is perfect for most mech mods. Most of my two mods are 24 millimeter or 22 millimeter. I don't have any bigger than that. So like for example, my US1 mech mod, this sits beautifully on it. It also sits beautifully on a lot of great mods. As long as you have that 24 millimeter clearance on the top of your regulated mod, it's gonna sit nice and flush. It sits beautifully on the Minikin V2. Hold on just a minute, let me take a vape. Set my airflow, I still had it on mouth to lung. And another thing with this airflow, because it's not slotted up or slotted down, you can purge on this RDA, no problem. It's gonna blow away from your face. Just depending, make sure, you know, if it if the airflow, you know, different addies have different depth 510s, if the airflow, when you're holding your mod, just make sure your airflow is pointing to the sides and it's gonna go straight out. I love the flavor on this. Okay, so back to where was I? Oh, the post. So when Brian showed me the post style that he had decided on for this deck and the fact that at the bottom of the cutouts of the post, it's angled in. So there's a nice little like sled for your leads. So when you drop your coil in, the leads follow that sled and just go right down into the deck, no problems. You don't get stuck. You don't have to sit there and pound on your coils and push them and bend them all out of shape to get the coils to go further down into the post. I really love that. The post screws coming in from the outside on the flat side of the coil leads means that if you have big beefy builds, you don't have to worry about it twisting your leads, messing up your coils. And I believe the posts are 3.5 by 2.5 diameter holes on the top of the post. I could have that wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's accurate. So that means you can fit some really nice big builds in this RDA. Also, because it is cut out on the, on the post, you can put your leads in from the bottom up. So if you're into big fancy builds, you like doing different intricate builds, this is a builder's dream. The posts allow for you to not only put dual coil, 
but you can put quad coil, tri coil, you can put your coil to sit between the posts. I've got 3.5 millimeter coils in here right now and plenty of room in that deck that I could have probably even went bigger. For me though, and because I, the way that I like to vape, 3.5 is about as big as I go. And I'm not a really super so, sub-ohm low vapor. So putting more than two coils in there would just ohm out too low for me for the way that I like to build. But it is most definitely possible. The other thing that I like about this RDA is the squonk pin. The fact that Brian, when he did the squonk pin, he allowed for the squonk pin to be raised by a couple millimeters means that when you put the squonk pin in and you're squonking on this, you're not going to deal with juice running back into the bottle and not having enough e-liquid to fully saturate your wicks. I know for me, sometimes I tend to vape my wicks really dry before I remember to re-drip or squonk. And it's really nice that that squonk pins allows for a little bit of e-liquid to sit in that reservoir. And it's a deep juice well. You've got a five millimeter juice well. So there's no problems with it holding enough e-liquid to keep your wicks nice and saturated. The other thing that I like talking about the deck is the fact that with it being a five millimeter deep juice well and with it being side airflow i have not been able to make this thing leak now i'm sure if you just dumped and dumped and dumped juice in there and you tilted it on its side you would eventually get some juice coming out the airflow but because those airflow holes are so small and close together it really kind of the tension of the high vg e-liquid that most of us vape 70 vg 80 vg max vg it won't run out of the airflow holes like bigger more spaced apart or the slotted side airflow that we're used to so i really love that it's really difficult to make this leak as a matter of fact i need to redrip and this is probably my most favorite thing about this rda right there the fact that i can just blat it in the top literally every time i drip all I have to do is grab my bottle, turn it upside down, hold it for a few seconds, and I'm done. I know that my coils are going to be saturated because they're sitting right there in the center. My wicks are going to be able to slurp up all of that. And if I overdripped a little bit, it's a five millimeter juice well and the airflow sits a little bit above the juice well. So I'm not going to have leaking issues. No leaking. I can turn it on its side, hold it there, and it's not going to leak. I can see a little bit of the moisture coming up around the airflow hose, but it's not leaking. I love that. A super saturated vape. I am really impressed by this RDA. Brian, you did an amazing job. Great job, brother. I I'm totally blown away. Now I will say, I did find two subjective cons, and these are completely subjective. I could not find any hardcore cons with this RDA. It's got a good protruding 510 pin, so it's hybrid mech safe. It's got a great squonk pin, so you can put it on your squonkers. It's got this airflow, which is so smooth, a build deck that you could build endlessly on. But it didn't come with coils, Brian. What were you thinking? Where are the coils? Yeah, yeah, that's a subjective con, most definitely. But a lot of RDAs are coming with coils now. So it would have been nice if I could have had some coils that I could have just grabbed right out of the box and installed them, especially for shops. Shops that want to sell this, it's nice when they've got coils on hand. And most shops do carry separate coils, but that's extra money to the customer. So a set of maybe fused Clapton's would have been nice. The other subjective con I have is with the Altum drip tip. I feel like Altum is getting overused. It's not pretty to me, you know, the yellow. And with this being black and silver, the Altum just kind of looks funny. But I will say that Altum drip tip, there is a reason behind it. The size of that drip tip being narrower and taller makes it concentrate the flavor. So if you're using that drip tip on this RDA, you're getting more flavor hitting your tongue, hitting your mouth, and it really does make a difference. 
but it's autumn. Why couldn't we have done a black Delrin drip tip? That's my other con. That's all I have. So guys, that's everything I have to say about the drop RDA. Once again, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you don't, hit the thumbs down. <laughs> If you're not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, please hit the bell button so that you'll get notifications when I upload my next review. So thank you again and have a great day, guys.